Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to end this project. Hello, welcome to the fourth and final part of Wow Atmos, the attempt to recreate the beautiful Atmos website. And here we are at the final stage. Let's have a look at what the program adding a loading screen, animating overlay elements, fading elements on load, fading items on load, polishing the scroll bar, playing animation on start and on end, and finally setting up a decent responsive experience. So before setting it to all flying companions, let's finish building it. Time to create our UI. We create a new component named overlay. It contains a main wrapper with the class overlay, an intro, a logo, and an explore button. In app.jsx, we can reduce the noise effect to 0.2 and add the new overlay component next to the canvas. Let's get the same font than the 3D scene from Google Fonts and import it into the index.css. Then we can set the styles of our overlay. I choose to do all the styling in index.css, but split it into specific files for bigger projects. The overlay is just a full width full ace container on top of our screen. Let's center the intro content. The logo is set absolutely because we will want to animate its position later to the top of the screen. And the explore button is a bit below the logo. So this is what we have. We add an animation on the logo to make it slightly go from down to up, fade and also unblur. Nice! Time to add the hover effect on the button. We make it relative, hide the overflow and add transition. We also add a fade in animation like the logo. On hover we set the color to white. And on the before of our button we add a big blue ellipse that grows on hover to give a filling effect. We can also create the fade out animation we will use later. Now we have those nice effects. Let's add a spinner. The SVG is in the public image folder. It's an absolute diff on the top right of our logo and its image rotate continuously. We use the transform rotate property on our animation. We should like that Wawatex circle. Now let's make our scene fade. Actually, what we will do is to add a white loader that fades out once our scene is ready. We can get the loading state with use progress, add the loader with the clause loader disappear if the progress equals 100. We will also render the intro UI element only if it's loaded. That way the animations will be triggered at the perfect time. Our loader is just a white overlay that fades out when it disappears. Look how now it smoothly fades when we reload. Let's keep our scene items invisible until we hit explore. In the experience we create a reference named 10 opacity starting at 0. We also create a reference to the line material. In the use frame we set the line material opacity to the scene opacity. Don't forget to attach the reference to the material. Then we pass the scene opacity reference to the clouds. On the clouds, we create a reference to the material and update its opacity in the use frame. We can remove our old opacity prop. By the way, this is a home way to do it. You can use React Spring or Framer Motion to have animated values. Now our clouds and curve are invisible. Perfect. To share data between the UI and the 3D scene, let's create a context named Play. For the moment, we just want a play value using a state. Wrap our whole app inside the play provider. That way we have access to our context everywhere. Now in the overlay, let's grab the play and set play. If play is true, we add the class disappear modifier to the intro. And on the click of the explore button, we set play to true. Let's adjust our UI elements when intro disappears. We move our logo to the top and scale it down to look smaller. We also fade out the spinner and explore button. Look what we have so far, the items nicely leave space for the 3D scene. Let's fade in the clouds and curve. In experience, get the play value from use play, and in the use frame, if it plays, let's lerp the scene opacity towards 1. Ta-da! It's fading! To add a cool airplane animation, let's create a JSP timeline plane in, because later we will create a plane out. We pose it and we use from to animate from below the camera to the neutral position. We add a use effect on the play variable to start the animation when it plays. 
Now the plane looks like it's flying from below. I'm trying to scroll but it doesn't work. Once it plays, we need to disable the overlay and we add pointer events to known. We can scroll again. Let's adjust our scroll bar. I set the width to 6 pixels. Unfortunately, to keep using scroll controls, I will need to add inline style to space it from the edges. I set the number of pages conditionally to not have a scroll bar before it starts. Because of the re-render, the scroll bar fade doesn't work this way. We need to use an animation. On the overlay, we add a text element to indicate the user to scroll that we will hide when the user scrolled. We will add has scroll in our context. In the CSS, we set our text invisible by default, fade in once it starts and fade out once user scrolled. Add the has scroll state in the context. And in the experience, let's set has scroll to true if the scroll is now different from zero. It works, but the scene re-renders and causes a jump when we set the state. To prevent it, we can wrap our experience items into a use memo. Now it's smooth. Let's add an end screen, add an end state in the play context. In the experience, at the end of the use frame, we can detect if we are close to the last point. We set end to true and play our play now timeline that we will create. Let's fade out the scene opacity if end is true. Don't forget to check that it's not ended for the fade in opacity. Then we can return in our use frame and stop our movement process because it's over. Create the play now timeline. We make the plane to go slowly further and above. Same for the camera and then make the plane disappear by setting it very far. We can get rid of the cloud that was in the middle at the end. Let's try. And it looks nice. Now add the overlay ending screen. It's exactly the same logic than the intro screen. In the app, we need to set the pages to zero when it's over too, to not have a scroll bar in the end. Now our ending screen appears. Let's have a look at the mobile version. It's broken. I add some media queries to make it decent. It's good for the UI, but we can adjust the experience for better readability. In the experience, let's create a reference of the camera. In the use frame, we will check if our window width is bigger than the height. We are in landscape, so we will set the field of view to 30 and the Z position to 5. These are the settings we already have. Then, if we are in portrait, we will increase a lot the field of view and go closer to the plane with the Z position of 2. That way we will see better on the side. But we could also do other adjustments to change the text section positions, for example. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed being part of this journey. I'd very much appreciate it if you could give me your feedback about this 4 videos format. Did you like the project, the explanation, the final results? Tell me anything you think could be improved in the comments below. The next project should contain physics, because it's a funny concept I haven't covered yet on this channel, so subscribe if you don't want to miss it. If you are still hungry for more React Refiber practice, why not watch this video tutorial already available here?